Hi everybody and welcome to the first week of the Revolution program. This is Reigniting Your Motivation. Um, I've put together this webinar which is the presentation that some of you may have seen at the gym but obviously this is for those who missed out and would like to watch from home. So before I begin, I just would like to ask if you could get your booklets out um, that have the revolution on the front um, and we'll go through those booklets and also if you have your bioimpedance scans as well handy if you can get them. If you don't have them, don't worry about it. Um, that's fine, we'll go through the presentation so that you know tonight is going to be on goal setting, okay, so reigniting your motivation, so we're looking at creating a vision as well, which I'll get to and uh, tell you all about the differences between the, the vision and the goals and also action plans. So let's get straight into it. Uh, just a little brief background on myself. Um, I've been working at the Centennial Health Club since it opened. I was actually at the gym Prior to um, the Centennial opening, I was there for about three years, um, and my background is in the AFL. Um, I was a Scots boy over in the eastern suburbs um, from about 2006 when I got a scholarship to the AFL to 2011. I went through around about 25 to 30 different injuries and illnesses, um, right from shoulder operation, finger operation, torn hamstrings, calves, um, broken fingers, toes, the lot. Um, but the one of the biggest ones was um, very, very poor nutrition when I was playing in the AFL. I wasn't eating correctly uh, post-training sessions and I became... Um, very malnourished and I nearly had a car accident coming home from training one day um, when I um, s slightly fell asleep at the wheel and ended up in the next lane. So as soon as that happened I got anemia, acute tonsillitis and glandular fever all at the same time and from there I spent about 12 weeks on the sidelines um, and they said to me that you, you not to do any physical activity. And from there, that's when I started getting a little bit of an interest in nutrition, and um, that's why obviously this is a, another major passion of mine. So that's a little bit of my story and why I'm here today. Um, and so, yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. So as I said with that booklet, I want you guys to take the booklet out if you've got it, and I want you to write your name on it. This booklet is yours, okay? Um, so make sure you put your name on it so that uh, it doesn't get lost. And uh, if there are any pages missing from your booklet, then please let somebody know at the desk and they will gladly sort that out for you. So, with that said, here's the Wheel of Wellness, okay? This is what it's all about. This is the six-week program split up into the six, uh, six sections, sorry. So we've got Reignite Your Motivation, that is week number one. That is what we're doing tonight, okay? Week number two, removing inflammatory foods, okay? Looking at processed foods, high sugar foods, trans fats, okay? These are basically artificial foods that have been created within around about the last 20,000 years, which evolutionary speaking is not a very, very long time, okay? So all of those artificial and processed foods that we find really dominate the market these days in terms of supermarkets and those sorts of things, okay? We're looking to remove those stimulants and other things um, as well, which affect general health, obviously performance, but um, uh, definitely weight loss and weight gain. So moving on to uh, the next week after that, refueling your cellular nutrition, okay? Looking at diets and supplements, and this is basically where we look at um, fixing up and getting you guys onto a really positive nutritional plan, okay? And getting this so that it becomes second nature to you over the course of the six weeks, and by the end of the six weeks, it is habit. And when it's habit, as we know, with bad habits, they're hard to break. Good habits are also hard to break, okay? So we want to make sure that we get those good, positive habits, and you'll find that they will just flow on into the rest of your lives after that period of time. The week after that, realigning your neuromuscular system. Um, this, is, this will be a personal presentation that I've put together. Um, on looking at postural alignment, pain alleviation, muscle activation, okay, basically getting your, your muscular system 
um, activating so that we can get through the exercise program pain-free and injury-free, okay? That is super, super important. As I spoke to you about with my um, past, I was, at that point, I was unfortunate. Now, I'm fortunate because I've gone through so many things. I've developed um, uh, a fascination with, with injury rehab and, and looking at the body and getting the body right. When, when we look at exercise, we look at warm-ups, postural alignment, certain muscles like the glutes, getting the glutes and the core strong and active and those sorts of things. So I'm very, very, very excited to share all of this experience with you guys in that presentation. So that will be week number four. Rehydrate your cells, that's the next week, okay, that's looking at water and electrolytes. So if you look at hydration as a part of health and well-being, okay, we look at the human body, it's around about 70-75% water, okay, the brain's around 90% water. Over 50% of the Western world is chronically dehydrated, and I, know, I don't mean just dehydrated, I mean chronically dehydrated, okay, which... When you look at water and what it does, every single physiological process in the body requires water, okay? So what we'll do in that week is we'll go through and look at how to rehydrate the cells and how to increase your metabolic rate and your athletic performance through the use of hydration, okay? And the last week is rebalancing your body systems. And what we mean by this is if you look at all of those five areas prior Okay, if we, if we get through all of those five areas and you're still not getting the results you desire and you still feel like something's up, okay, then we, we may be getting to something a little bit deeper when we look at the digestive system, thyroid, adrenals, and that sort of thing, okay? So these are the really, really deep things that, that, can, um, that can have um, uh, hung around for a very long time, okay? So these things take a little bit more to reverse and that's when we may look at getting other people involved, such as um, doctors and those sorts of things, to run some simple tests, get right to the bottom of that, and then turn it around. So that's a look at the wheel of wellness. Okay, so with that said, let's uh, get into the goal setting. So how do we measure your success throughout the revolution? Well, there's three steps to it, guys. And the first step is objective quantitative measures. Okay, I'll get into all of these. These are just the headings. The second is subjective qualitative measures, and the third is subjective behavioral measures, okay? So, what are these? Well, objective quantitative measures, this is the bioimpedance scan that everyone um, will hopefully have gone through, okay? So, the bioimpedance scan basically just gets your, your results from a few different areas of the body that are of interest, okay? And then we're looking at the results at the end. Now, I'll go through the results very briefly tonight, but I don't want you guys to get too caught up in these, in these results, okay? Because it's about the changes that we get over the six weeks, okay? So I'll go through them. Um, if you've got them handy, have them, have them ready um, for a couple of slides time, I think. Uh, actually, here it is now, okay? So... Body composition analysis, what we're looking here in the bioimpedance scan, okay, if I go through here, body composition is defined as the knowledge of the quantitative amounts of all the body components, okay, so the first one here, fat mass, the total sum of fatty tissue in the body, okay, so the second, fat free mass, is the total amount of lean tissue mass of the body. Overall, basically what we're trying to do in the six weeks, these are the two most important ones. We are looking to decrease the top, the first one, the fat mass, and we're looking to increase the fat-free mass. Basically, that's it in a nutshell, okay? If you look at the others, active tissue mass, total body water, intracellular fluid, and extracellular fluid, they're all important, but they're not, they're not really the ones that we're looking to, to, to focus on. They will come naturally, okay? But overall, what I want you guys to just um, think about with the bioimpedance scan in the next six weeks is to decrease the total sum of fatty tissue in the body, okay, and look at increasing the amount of lean tissue mass. And this is what body composition is all about, okay, and it's not about stepping on the scales and going, oh no, I haven't lost any weight over the six weeks because you may have increased your lean tissue mass, okay, which is at least twice the density of body fat, okay, so you may have just stacked on some muscle, okay, and decrease your body fat, which is exactly what we're trying to do. So I don't want you guys to get caught up in things like scale weight and all that sort of thing, okay? So subjective qualitative measures, okay? David has put together an awesome little questionnaire here called the Pepsi test, okay? So basically what this is, personal effectiveness, performance, and stress indicators. I want you guys to spend a minute or two now 
um, please feel free to pause the video and go through this. And I want you guys to get really honest now about where we are at. Okay, I use this analogy a little bit. If you if you've got a roadmap and you've got a destination, okay, you know where you want to be, okay, and you know how to get there, but you've got to get honest about where you are at the moment, okay. Otherwise, it, it doesn't make sense. So, right now you're at the very start, okay, and you're looking to get to a certain place, and we're going to go through your visit, vision, and goals, and everything. And you, you've got the system now to get there over the next six weeks. I want you guys to think about. Where uh, am I now? Okay, and this is a great way for us to find this out. Okay, so I want you guys to now pause the video, have a look through, go through and, and, and rate one being really poor and 10 being really awesome, perfect. Okay, and I want you to go through all of these now and uh, then we'll move on. Excellent. Okay, now that you've done that, Let's move on to the next one, which is subjective behavioral measures. Okay, so the three areas in this uh, area in this subjective behavioral measures is wellness vision, smart goals, and an action plan. Okay, so before I get into this, if you look on your booklets, you'll find my personal commitment. So I'm not going to read that. I just want you to find that um, inside your booklets. Okay, you can have a quick read through now. Basically, what this is, is your personal commitment to the program, but more importantly, to yourselves, okay? So, um, over the next six weeks, I will read it actually, because it's very important. Over the next six weeks, I agree to complete my daily physical activity and healthy eating action plan so that my embedded health behaviors will increase my personal effectiveness, productivity, physical health, and stress management capabilities. I agree to eliminate coffee. Ouch, I hear a few of you say. Alcohol, ouch, once again. And other high sugar, high fat junk foods from my diet to give my cells the best chance of achieving optimal recovery and energy production and to aid in the release of unwanted body fat. Okay, guys, remember this isn't forever. Okay, this is six weeks so that you will feel and see some changes in this period of time. Okay, I don't want you to feel like this is signing your life away forever. Okay, because that's just unrealistic, all right? But for the next six weeks, Really stretch a bit, and I want you guys to work hard to make sure you eliminate things like coffee, alcohol, and other high sugar, high fat junk foods, okay, as we say, to give the cells the best chance. And I agree to actively participate in the following activities over the next six weeks. Four personal training or group exercise classes, one educational seminar per week, and I'd like you to sign on your booklets if you've got them, okay, and then write your name. So we'll do that now and then move on. So creating a wellness vision. Excuse me. So a wellness vision is um, the step above a goal. So what I want you guys to think about when you when you're creating a vision is how you want how you see yourselves in six weeks' time. Okay. So this is where you start to really dig deep and ask yourselves the the underlying why. Okay. Why is it that you first even stepped into the gym? Okay, why is it that you started this program? Okay, what is it that you're really wanting to get out of this? Okay, some examples. It may be that you want to get kick the footy with the kids. Okay, you might want to fit into your old pair of skinny jeans that you used to have. All right, or you just basically want to move around and you just see yourself as feeling better and looking better. So here's an example, a wellness vision example. In six weeks, I'll feel energized, engaged. And engaged, having noticed changes in my body shape, which I'm happy with. Excuse me again. Other people will be commenting on how clear my skin and eyes appear and how much trimmer I am. They'll also be commenting on how happy and positive I look. Okay? So that's an example. I want you guys to spend a couple of minutes going through. Now remember, this. you don't have to come up with something perfect like that right now. I just want you to write a couple of bullet points down, okay, and then you're going to start to create a wellness vision, but as quickly as you can, if you can get it into a paragraph, that would be fantastic. What I would like you to do when you have done this, okay, is I want you to take that wellness vision and I want you to write it on a little piece of paper, okay, as well as on this booklet, but I want you to write it in a piece of paper and I want you to fold it up and I want you to put it inside your wallet or your pocket or your handbag, and I want you to carry it around with you, okay? Because this is really, really, really important. This is bigger than just some, you know, little program I'm putting on here. This is your wellness vision, okay? This is you and where you want to be in six weeks, okay? So I want you guys to carry this with you, okay? And use it as your guidance system for the next six weeks, okay? So moving on, 
Um, I'll, actually, I'll get you to pause the video now before I go on and make sure that you've, you've done that, okay? And then we'll, we'll move on, okay? So pause that now. Excellent, okay, now that we've done that, we can move on to the goals, the SMART goals, okay? So what is a SMART goal? Some of you may have heard of it, others may not. SMART is the acronym for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time-Based, okay? So specific, obviously you want it to be specific to what it is that we're doing, measurable, achievable, they're all pretty self-explanatory things here, okay? So this is an example of a behavior-based and outcome-based SMART goal, okay? I will actively participate in four group exercise classes per week at the Centennial Health Club and complete a 30 minute walk on the other days of the week so that I can achieve my vision of feeling energized, having clear, healthy looking skin and fitting into my old pair of skinny jeans. Now this is not for everybody, okay, of course, but this is the general look of a, of a, um, a smart goal, okay? But I want you to have a look at what's really important about this and it's the behavioral based aspect of it. So what we mean by behavior based is what sort of action are we going to take? What behavior is involved in having to achieve these SMART goals? Okay, so I will actively participate in, etc. Okay, it can be a 30 minute walk as your extra bit or a 30, 30 minute swim or a bike ride or, or you know, walk with the dogs or something like that. Okay, so I want you guys to get specific for yourselves. Okay, and have a think about um, the SMART goals. So I want you to take a couple of minutes to write your SMART goal now. Uh, pause the video and then we'll move on. Excellent. Okay, now that that SMART goal is written down, it can be bullet points or another paragraph or so, we're going to move into the action plan for this SMART goal. Okay, so the action plan is now you've got your goal, you've got your vision, and now it's about really breaking it down into what action steps need to be taken in order to achieve them. Okay, so there are 10 here, but you don't have to fill out 10, they can just be a couple. An example of an action plan towards a SMART goal for exercise is we look at what holds us back. So one thing may be that you set an alarm for the morning, but you set the alarm 10 paces from your bed. So when you wake up and the alarm goes off, you've got to get out of bed to go and switch it off. Okay, that's, that's an example. Another one will be that you um, talk to a partner, spouse, friend, okay? And you get them involved and, and you use them as part of your action plan. You tell them about your SMART goals so that they can keep you accountable. Okay, these, these are, are really, really important things to help you along and make sure that you feel like you're not really alone with this and you've got someone else. We're obviously here to help you, but it's always good to have a little friend or a partner or someone just to give you a little kick in the butt every now and again and keep you accountable, okay? So that's another example of uh, an action plan towards your SMART goal for exercise, okay? So have a think, write down a couple, okay? We can always add to them later. I'll give you a couple minutes now and uh, pause the video and we'll get that done and then move on. Okay, great. So next we're moving into the healthy eating goal. So the healthy eating goal, obviously similar to what you just wrote for the SMART goal for your exercise, but obviously it's now relating to nutrition. Okay, so obviously nutrition is an extremely important aspect of the results that we're looking to achieve, whether it be uh, performance-based or weight loss, etc, etc, okay, or weight gain. So I want you guys to think of now what is, what do you believe is the biggest thing that's holding you back when it comes to nutrition, okay? And for most people, okay, there's, there's going to be one main thing, maybe a couple of big things, but I just want you to pick one, okay? I don't want you to go too crazy with it. I just want you to pick one and looking at my healthy, my healthy eating smart goal is to remove toast as my breakfast and replace it with a bowl of oats and some banana, okay? So that's one idea. Another one is my healthy eating smart goal is to cut down the portion sizes of my meals by say a half or two thirds, okay? Another one may be my healthy eating smart goal is to eliminate chocolate as my 
dessert, okay? And then we add in those other aspects that we wrote from the SMART goal, okay, for the time basin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But they're the general idea that I want you to have a think about when you're writing your healthy eating SMART goal. So I'll give you a minute or two again. Uh, please just pause the video and um, write that down for me and then we'll move on. Excellent, all done. And now we're moving into the healthy eating action plan, okay? So again, action steps that we are going to take in order to achieve our SMART goal for healthy eating. So say you, your goal for nutrition was to stop eating chocolate after dinner at night time, okay? Because you get cravings, okay? That's pretty common. One thing that I've done with a couple of my clients in the past who have got cravings at night time is I get them to brush their teeth. Okay, you'd be surprised, it might sound weird, but what happens when you brush your teeth is that um, that little uh, taste that you get and the little cravings that you get disappears in an instant, okay, because the toothpaste, um, yeah, just it basically just eradicates that craving that you've got, okay, so that's something that you can try, okay, um, a really, really good action plan um, example for you that will help you with nutrition is when you go to the supermarkets to get the food that you may bring into the house, don't go hungry, okay? Don't go to the supermarkets on an empty stomach when you're hungry. That is a big, big <laughs> mistake. And we've all done it. I certainly know. I've done it a, m a million times, okay? And I really try not to because when you go there, you just get these temptations. You go, oh my God, I'm going to eat that whole tub of ice cream. You feel like you're going to eat it right there and then, okay? And you buy it for later, okay? So look at that. Make sure you don't do that. Bring a list. Stick to a list, okay? If you need a hand on what's um, what a good healthy shopping list is and everything, we can help you out with that, okay? So um, similar to before with the exercise, uh, action steps, write down some healthy eating action steps for yourself. Um, take a minute or two and pause the video and then we'll uh, move on and finish off. Okay, so this is um, a good little quote. Um, Success is what happens at the intersection of mindset and action, okay? So what I've spoken about tonight has been, of course, mindset and getting our thoughts right about the next six weeks. The next step is of course the actions that we take okay so we've got our action steps and now we're moving towards success okay so it's a very very good quote there just to recap reignite your motivation wellness vision smart goals and action plan they're the three areas that we looked at and we've got all of those and now as i said before i want you to get your wellness vision even bring your smart goals around with you if you'd like and your action plan so that you don't forget them but definitely your wellness vision okay hold that close to you just to recap this area for the Wheel of Wellness, okay, tonight we've gone reignite your motivation and next week we will remove inflammatory foods from the diet and then move on to the following weeks, okay, so very excited about the next six weeks and uh, I am looking forward to hearing some great success for everybody, okay. Just to finish, Okay, this is just a little personal thing um, for myself as well. I want you guys to have a think about what reward you're going to give yourself for this program. Okay, we talk a lot about setting the goals and the vision and everything like that. But I, what's really important and what we miss along the way sometimes is the rewards that we give ourselves for the hard work. Okay, it's not enough to just think forward six weeks and go, yeah, it's going to be great when I get there. I want you guys to really start to think about what reward will you give yourselves. Now, as an example, say you really do like wine, okay? And if for six weeks you don't drink wine, give yourself the reward of going on a wine tasting tour of some sort when you're finished, okay? If you like, if you're a coffee enthusiast, okay? I'm not sure what if they have any of those sorts of coffee tasting things, I haven't seen one, but if they do, maybe that's something, okay? I want you guys to really think, what will I reward myself with? And this is the most important part of this, guys, okay? The most important part. I want you to include inside this reward someone more important than yourself that you will share the reward with, okay? Maybe your spouse, your children, okay, or a best friend, I want you to include them in the reward and I want you to tell them about this program and the hard work that you're going to put in because I want them to share in your success 
because happiness is happiness shared. Okay, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the presentation tonight. And uh, if you have any questions about anything, please feel free to come and uh, get myself or Andrew or anyone else, David, in the team. Okay, we'd be more than happy to help out. I wish you all the best for the program, and I look forward to hearing about all of the successes at the end. Thank you.